Okay, so the the next thing that I want to draw your attention to is a different perspective that can address some of these problems we have with taking either a um, mono, uh, either a monologic perspective or a pluralistic monologic perspective and talk about what we call dialogism. Dialogism sees meaning as multivocal and that the meaning emerges in the tension between different voices. So if we're talking about a the difference between a high power culture and a low power culture, right? The high power culture functions as it is, the low power culture functions as it is. The meaning comes when those in fact those cultures engage each other. Right? So somebody coming from a low power distance culture, uh, maybe somebody who is a um, lower person in a corporation calls over to the other um, corporation, then maybe they're doing business together, calls over and um, wants to talk to the actual decision maker who's higher up in the status chain and they cannot get access to that decision maker because they're not high enough in a high enough status in their own corporation. Or they talk to somebody else who's at their own status level and they think actual decision has been made, but they don't understand the person they're talking to does not actually have the authority to make the decision. They're just the person who would be appropriate for somebody at that level to talk to. Right? So then the company thinks, oh, we've got a deal done, and then they find out there was no deal done because you didn't talk to the person you actually needed to talk to, but that person won't talk to you because you're not a high enough person, person of status in your own corporation. So you can see that there's where the meaning comes up, right? Then you go, oh, wait a minute. Okay, now we've got some problems here. We need to figure out how to work this out because we've got these different philosophies. In fact, this person in our company is will is has the authority to make decisions that affect the entire company, even though they're not a se in senior management. Um, this person over here in this company is at the same level as this person, but they don't have the authority to make any decisions. So we need to be able to figure out how to be able to do that, um, how to negotiate those differences. Um, so dialogism is what we call a resistance to monologue. So it's, it's by this we mean resisting having one voice become authoritative. So that one voice doesn't say, okay, this is the right voice and everything else is wrong. Now, it still allows the person to make individual ethical decisions at any time they need to make an ethical decision. But the decision has to lie with that person as opposed to some overriding authoritative voice. Right, so we say it's ethical and that the individual is called to give voice to multiple voices. I'm supposed to take these different perspectives into consideration, but I always have to come back to myself as an ethical being and making a final decision. So a company may say, you know what, here's the deal. We understand you have these distinctions in your hierarchy, but we don't have those distinctions in our hierarchy. And we, in fact, have empowered this person to make the decision. So if you're going to do business with us, you're going to have to either figure out how to be able to communicate with this person, right? Um, and it might be that you have to lower yourself, your standards, to be able to communicate with somebody who's not in senior management. Or um, we're just not, or you're going to have to empower your employee to be able to make the, the employee who you will allow to talk to this person to make the decisions because that's just the way it's going to be. Or vice versa, you might say, okay, I understand where we're at. Um, we don't have these same distinctions, but obviously if we're going to do business with this company, we have to then make the decisions to have our senior management make the negotiations because they're the only ones who this other company is going to listen to, and they're a valuable business partner for us, so we need to make that concession for this business partner. So again, you're making individual decisions based on the tension between the voices and the engagement of the voices as opposed to one authoritative voice, which would then not be able to allow you to do business, right? So if your authoritative voice was, um, okay, we don't do that. Uh, so if you want to do business with us, you're going to have to do it that way. If not, that's you're just we're not going to be able to do business with you or vice versa. Okay, now our senior management team needs to make all the decisions because this company believes it that way, so we should do that for everybody, right? We don't want to do that. We want to be able to make 
good, strong decisions based on the situation and the circumstance as opposed to some overall authoritative voice. Same thing with, so if you look at the book, there is this kind of argument that this uh, multicultural organization is exactly the way we should be. But the reality is that the vast majority of the world does not function that way. It's a, in a sense, a fantasy of well-meaning progressives in um, power cultures that have that idea. But in fact, most cultures around the world, there's actually more high power distance cultures doing business than there are low power culture distance doing business. Low power culture is really a Western European uh, and in our country, a European American perspective, right? You see that the rest of the world, a lot of them are very high power distance cultures and you need to be able to um, have things like palanca or confianza to be able to uh, get things done. So my example here is at the end of No Country for Old Men, um, there's a person who's been stalking somebody because they got they took some money that didn't belong to them um, and they won't give that money back. So he says, basically, if you don't give the money back now, I'm going to kill. I, I'm, you're going to die anyways, but you're going to everybody else around you is going to die, too. So he doesn't do that. So at the end, the killer ends up showing up at the guy's at the guy's wife's house. And um, she basically says, you're going to kill me. He goes in and she goes, it's not my fault. I didn't have anything to do with this or whatever. And he said, okay, well, I'll flip a coin. And the coin will, if the coin lands a certain way, you'll have a chance to live. She says, the coin don't have no say. It's just you. Right? This is what we mean by not being able to avoid our ethical responsibility to appealing to some outside force. Right. So somebody who says, well, it's just my religion, so I have to chop off somebody's head or it's just my religion. So I have to now go and try to, um, you know, like the, like the Catholic Church did in America. I have to kill people that don't agree to convert to my religion. Right. Which was the same type of activity that was happening. The, the, the and the Protestant Church did the same thing on the East Coast after the Catholics did it in the middle of the country. Um, this notion that we have to kill the Indian to save the man, um, you know, the idea that there's a higher ethical of, uh, um, authoritative voice, which is the religion, um, and then and so that then deter that that overly determines my actions in any particular instance with any particular person. Right, so it, it, we avoid our ethical responsibility there, and Bakhtin says that's not okay. We can't do that. We have to, in fact, have the ethical responsibility be in the individual actor in the decision they're making at the moment they're making it. So this notion comes this idea of ad addressivity or responsibility to others. We need to address others, and we are responsible to others as they address us. I cannot avoid the voice of others or avoid the responsibility of my voice in responding to them so that I need to be able to take that responsibility in the moment. So with dialogism, when we think about this notion of dealing with other cultures and people who have different ideas than us and people who have different philosophies than us, right? the idea of, of, of dialogism is to understand at that moment and to take a consideration of everything Right. And not to say, OK, well, this authoritative voice is the is the right voice, but to make an ethical decision in that moment and to say, this is how I should act ethically. Which means that sometimes I'm going to say this other culture, what they do is just not right. Um, and it's just not right on these grounds. And I have to fundamentally, fundamentally believe these grounds are um, in the end run what my heart of heart tells me is true. So we have to be able to say, we have to be able to make these critical judgments. And so when we're talking about the world, we may not, and, and you may not, as students coming from different backgrounds, you may not, in fact, agree with pluralism. You may not agree with the multiculturalism, but you need to be able to understand why that's the case and articulate why it's the case and to be able to talk about how your perspective ends up being a more appropriate perspective 
which obviously you need to be able to address values. You need to address a lot of different things that will put your position, um, that will give your position standing. So hopefully this presentation um, helped kind of give you some ability to be able to engage these ideas in the text in a way that makes you feel as though you're not being forced to necessarily believe in things you don't believe in or also seeing the perspective as really a one-sided perspective. I think Sorrell's perspective is useful in having us be able to critically analyze some of the things that um, you know happen in modern society and especially happen in modern society from a culture that is in power in many ways but we don't want to be in a position where uh, we don't see her we, we don't actually engage her perspective with a critical eye as well so hopefully this helps you and if you have any questions please sign on to my office hours or send me an email and we will uh, talk about it thanks and have a great day